What's up guys? So in this video I'm going to go over the top five things that I wish I knew going into engineering when I was in school. So at this point I'm five years into my career. I have five years of professional experience and I've held three different roles at the company I've been at this whole time and I have my master's degree in computer engineering. So without wasting your time the first thing that I wish I knew going into school was that engineering isn't going to guarantee you wealth. You have to be smart with your money just like anybody else. You have to be invested a little bit with every paycheck into your 401k and any other investment accounts that you have. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so that's literally the most I'm going to say on that. But that's something you got to be doing, as well as basic budgeting and not overspending and living within your means and all of that good stuff. If you're not doing any of that shit, you're going to be screwed and engineering isn't going to save you. On top of that, engineers do get paid well, but there is a cap on how much you make. The average engineering salary is in six figures, which is very good, but there is a cap and you won't be able to make any more than that cap. Can you live a comfortable life making six figures? Yes. Well, at least for now, the time of recording in 2023. But if you want to get like rich, rich, you got to be doing more than just your job. You have to have a side hustle and be investing into the right stuff, whether it be like real estate or whatever. But I'm not a financial advisor, so I will leave it at that. The next piece of information I wish I knew was that you're not guaranteed a good job, honestly. Like, you still have to grind to get into a good job in this field. And you really gotta know your shit technically. And that's definitely something that goes to all branches of engineering, but you really gotta be technically inclined because that's gonna determine your paycheck and the value you bring into specific roles. I know that for my career, I started as a test engineer, which at this point isn't my desired career, but it is where I started and that's where I could be valued at a lot more if I wasn't trying to move into software engineering. But I hope you had a whole video on that. If you have any interest in what test engineering is and my thoughts on it, then check out this video. But you're not guaranteed a great engineering job if you don't have the skills to back it up. And that might sound like obvious, but you really got to grind and network to end up in the desirable roles. The next one might be more specific to software engineering. I can't really speak to the other engineering disciplines like mechanical or civil or any of the other ones, but at least for software engineering, the interview process does not reflect the job that you're gonna be doing. A lot of these more desirable companies like the Fang or Mang companies, Facebook, Amazon, etc., going through their interview process isn't gonna accurately depict what you're gonna be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, which honestly, really pisses me off because the interview process is essentially going to really grill you on the technical stuff that you know. And how much technical stuff you know is gonna basically determine whether you get the job. Are you gonna be able to write out this algorithm on a whiteboard and have it work on the first try? Are you gonna be able to describe what X data structure is and how to use it? There's so many different avenues that they could take, like operating systems concepts, computer architecture, algorithms stuff like that they re and it's it's really frustrating for someone like myself because I'm not a bad software engineer but I don't have to do that stuff on a daily basis I can get stuff working I can go into a code base and kind of like prod around and see what affects what and what's connected to what and carefully figure out how to change this without affecting other stuff that is what your job consists of unless you're doing design work from the ground up. But that's not always the case when you're at a more established company. The only time you're gonna be doing design work from the ground up is if you're at a startup. But if you're at any company that has a number of years under their belts, they're gonna have code bases already and you might not be doing full-blown design work right away. You might just be doing maintenance and debug work, which is what a good chunk of software engineering is in general. And that's something that I can do, but it just, it's really frustrating because then when you get into an interview and they're throwing all the stuff at you that you haven't seen since you're in school, that's gonna dictate whether or not you get the job, which means essentially anytime you're looking for a new job, if you were to get laid off, or if you just wanna get a pay raise bigger than your promotion, you really gotta study stuff that you haven't seen since school, which really sucks. And that's just how it is if you wanna get ahead in software engineering, which I honestly don't. I just, I have a stable job for now, knock on wood, <laughs> but I wanna use 
use this period of stability to get ahead in other stuff. But anyway, enough of that. Next one, you're also not guaranteed six figures right away. It all depends on the amount of value that you bring into your role, obviously, and your skill set, which also kind of ties into the next one, so I guess I'll go into it. Your first job or, or certification or code bootcamp if it's software engineering can very easily dictate the rest of your career path if you're not forward thinking enough, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's something to be aware of. So using myself as an example, the first internship that I took while I was in school was that of a test engineer. So in order to get out of that, I had to eventually transfer into a software engineering position at the same company because other companies weren't willing to hire me into a software engineering role, even though that was the majority of my work. Again, that's something that's in this video up here, but you're not guaranteed six figures right away. I don't make six figures at the time of my recording this. I've been working my way up over the last few years towards that. I'm close, but I'm not there yet. And it all depends on the value that you bring to your role and your skill set that you have going into it. But in regards to your first job dictating the rest of your career path, if you want to specialize and you like, like what you're doing, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you want to have the room to be flexible and try different things, you might want to be careful about what you commit to first because I know that in my situation, being a test engineer limits your ability to do design work down the line because companies aren't as willing to take a chance on a test engineer into a design role. But that's just something I've experienced personally. So yeah, five things that I wish I knew going into engineering. If you got some value from this video or if you think I missed something or if you disagree on anything that I said, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to engage with you guys and I will catch you on the next one.